Okay, we 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 do have some guests with us today, so I would like um, the individuals who brought guests um, to introduce them. So Jeff Aslin, you have a guest. Thank you. <laughs> Sherry Sanders, you have a guest. Thank you. Chuck Lanier, you have a guest and future member. Great. Thank you, Rick. And Lil, Lil Dorn, you have a guest. Dan Rogers has many guests that he's going to introduce in his presentation. So Dan, if you could come on up. Um, if you don't mind, if you can stand in front of the lectern to do that and then we'll get a photo. Good afternoon. It is absolutely my pleasure to be here today to represent our Kiwanis Club, the Boy Scouts of America, Georgia Carolina Council and the Sam Tyson Endowment Fund for, for Scholarship for School. So I first wanna say that, you know, we all knew Sam and loved him. It's been about 10 months now since he passed and we're honored to have his widow, uh, Cheryl Tyson with us today. Cheryl, thank you for being here. We know Sam was, was involved in Qantas and in scouting and in uh, the Wounded Warrior and different projects. And he was a man of action. And, and I wanted to say that when he passed, a ten, uh, Tenet Houston Houston took it upon himself to honor and, and develop this endowment. And in a very short period of time during a pandemic raised over, I think $30,000 roughly to endow this so that we could honor Sam in perpetuity and select someone to help fund their college every year. So. Tenant, we thank you for your efforts to spearhead this and, and to honor Sam and for all the people in the club and the community that donated to make the, the project a reality and it, it is doing, going well. So we talked about scouting briefly and uh, scouting has maintained well through the pandemic. And we had six applicants for the, for the endowment uh, scholarship this year. And we had a dynamic group of people, Brian Graham, uh, all Eagle Scouts from the club, Brian Graham, Cam Nixon, John Robertson, and Sam's son, Carl, who, who's a former member and I think is gonna apply to be a member again. He's also an Eagle Scout. So we sat down last week and reviewed those six applications. And we're very pleased to announce that Ben Budenstein was, was uh, just an outstanding applicant. And we're very pleased to be able to present him with this $1,500 scholarship. He is gonna to go to the University of Georgia and study engineering. So let's come over here, okay.
Thank you so much, Dan. And congratulations um, to Benjamin. And um, we want to also welcome his family who are here with us today and his um, principal who came back from vacation um, to uh, join us as well. So we're really thankful for that. And um, Sam was very precious to all of us. And it's really wonderful that Tenet came up with this idea and the club rallied around that and was able to do that in such a short period of time. Again, as Dan said, during um, a pandemic. So. Um, so now we have uh, our history lesson. And as you might know, for our history moments, I have moved on to um, highlighting national days of celebration. So today is actually National Simplicity Day, um, which I need for today. Okay, um, so National Simplicity Day honors transcendentalist Henry David Thoreau advocating a life of simplicity. Henry David Thoreau was born on July 12th, 1817, and lived his life as many things, including an author, a philosopher, a naturalist, and a historian. He was also known to be a tax resistor, an abolitionist, a development critic, and a surveyor. His book, Walden, is a reflection upon simple living in natural surroundings. In our fast, ever-increasing busy lifestyles, the observance of National Simplicity Day encourages us to step back and look at ways we can simplify our lives. It's an opportunity to declutter and eliminate the unnecessary burdens that weigh us down. Even taking a few moments to tune into nature can help us refocus and find balance. How can you simplify? We'll seek a leisurely pace that does not include the accumulation of things. That's the easiest explanation of the day. Look at nature or companionship, perhaps to a few passages from a book or the wisdom of a child. However, living simply doesn't mean living without, it means living with only what you need. So look around throughout the day and consider your excesses. The next time something breaks, ask whether it can be repaired instead of replacing it. When our lives are simpler, we decrease our stress. We are no longer feel the pressure to acquire more things and we have time to pursue adventures and spend time with the people we enjoy. So identify what's important to you. This list may include things, goals, and activities. Don't dismiss small achievements. They do not necessarily equate to clutter. They are stepping stones. However, if they aren't part of the bigger picture, consider slashing them. When it comes to things, you have to admit we hold onto some things for sentimental reasons. On the other hand, we buy too much junk for all the wrong reasons. Identify the ones that are most important and get rid of the rest. Put a ban on impulse buying. Make a list of things before a shopping trip and if it's not on the list, it cannot be bought unless it's toilet paper. That is the one exception. Otherwise, you will get it the next trip and see how that improves your bank account. When it comes to activities, consider the ones that are time wasters and have no value. Again, which are important to you? Do they bring you joy? Do they improve the world around you? If the answer is no to any of these questions, why is that activity still in your life? In the complicated world we inhabit today where mobile phones, laptops, and other modern day gadgets mean we rarely experience true peace and quiet to gather our thoughts. What better excuse than to use National Simplicity Day to leave technology at home and experience the true feeling of the moment. Amen. Okay, we're now gonna do um, our attendance prize. For those of you who joined virtually, you have attendance slips as well. We're going to ask our um, guest or our speaker to choose one of our slips. John Robertson wins the attendance prize. The attendance prize is a $20 gift card to Subway provided by Dalton Brandon. So you get two lunches out of the deal here. Okay, um, now our President elect Troy Lanier is going to introduce our speaker and my friend, Mr. Mayor Britton Williams. We are simply fortunate to have with us the, mayor, the newly elected mayor of North Augusta, Britton Williams. Many of you know Britton. He was born and raised in Augusta, and his father was a longtime member of the club. His father had his own table. And uh, he was telling me a story earlier about how uh, his father and some of the older members would uh, bring their hearing aids and pull them in the middle of the table and they have a drawing to determine whose hearing aids were the best. And that's how they made it through some of the meetings. 
But Britton is a graduate of Presbyterian College. He worked for Bank of America for 11 years and for Edward Jones for 23 years. He's been very active in North Augusta civic matters, including North Augusta Forward, the Optimist Club, North Augusta Chamber of Commerce, and the North Augusta Arts and Heritage Center. He's raised three adult children. He's lived in North Augusta for 27 years. He is a former Eagle Scout, I guess always an Eagle Scout. And we are, again, very fortunate to have him. Please welcome Britton Williams. Thank you, thank you. Can you hear me? Is this a perfect lot better, isn't it? Okay. Um, I tell you, I, I feel like I'm among friends. Um, I'm going to set my uh, timer because I told Martha I'd be respectful of y'all's time. But it kind of reminded me of the story about the gentleman who brought his friend to church for the first time. So they proceeded through the service and the minister got ready to get up there to preach. And he stood up in the pulpit, took his watch off, put it right up there for him to look at it. And the guy's friend goes, what's that mean when your minister does that? And the guy goes, absolutely nothing. So uh, I want to be a little bit more respectful for y'all. So I'm going to start that. I tell you, I feel like I'm among, I'm among, I'm among friends today. I really do. Uh, I remember Susan Honeycutt. I don't think Susan's here, but she's a childhood friend of mine. And she called back. I wasn't mayor then. She said, yeah, we're looking at moving to North Augusta to have meetings. I thought that was great. And uh, of course, Martha has always been, I call her one of my balcony supporters. So, uh, and then I look back, look out there and see folks talking about Eagle Scout. Morris Moss and I were Eagle Scouts the same day. It was you, me, and Wright McLeod, the three of us. Right? Is that right? So anyway, and everybody on Morris's family was Eagle Scout, from your dad to everyone your brother. I think. So anyway, uh, great to see Glasgow. So many folks out there. Uh, thank you for being here. I don't know if anyone has officially done this for the city of North Augusta. If they have, I'm going to do it again. But if not, I, as a mayor, I want to tell you, thank you for your business. We appreciate you coming over to North Augusta to have these meetings. And I hope it's been a positive experience in our facility. But thank you really for that. Uh, what I'd like to do today is uh, just share a little bit about um, North Augusta. And I have a, I've started the last month at the end of my social media post, I'll put, or, in, and I've done this in some of my interviews, I'll have a statement that says, North Augusta, our future is bright. I'd like to maybe share with you why I feel that about North Augusta and really the CSRA as well. First of all, I will tell you, one thing that's exciting that's happening in North Augusta is we have a city council that is really engaged. And the reason why I think that's important is we put a hundred day plan in place. And I tell you, when you see council, we're 70 days into that, when you start checking off boxes that you're accomplishing things, I think that energizes a council. The other thing for citizens, what it's done is they're hearing us not tell them what we're going to do, but they're seeing us do what we said we would do. So that has been very, very positive for us. Uh, just three things. Uh, communication was a big deal for me. I really felt that was lacking as far as listing our citizens. So just three things that we've implemented, which we've had really positive success for. The first one is we do something called the public power hour. And the first hour before the first city council meeting of every month, any citizen can come forward in front of council and share anything on their mind. Okay, and we've had really good results with that. Things that we did not know was had, something had broken in the city, whatever it may be, but it's been a good voice for citizens. The second thing we're doing is called meet the mayor meetings where myself and two of our city council folks are going out in different neighborhoods. And again, it's just trying to listen to people and give people a voice and let them know that we're listening to them. And the third thing is we started, I started doing a vlog. It's about a three minute video once a month. Kind of think for you old folks like me, think of Cliff Notes, a Cliff Notes version of what council has done the previous month and some highlights that's happened. And I feel like those are three things that we are doing in North Augusta that has made a difference as far as communication with our citizens, because we've had some challenges with that in the past. Now, what I'd like to do is take a few minutes and talk about what I think the future looks like in what I call the five corridors or the five areas of North Augusta. And I'll tell you, growth is happening and it's gonna to continue to happen, not just for North Augusta, quite frankly, for the entire CSRA. <laughs> And a big reason why, as y'all know, is what's happening at Fort Gordon, with that being the Cyber Command. That is a big, big deal. And it's gonna really help propel the CSRA in future development. That, they generate about 2.4 billion 
uh, dollars a year in economic incentive to, to this CSRA, so they're a big deal. But if you think about it, see in the CSRA, we're really fortunate because we are very diversified. We've got the Savannah River site uh, in Aiken County. You're talking about the, uh, the amazing medical community we have on the other side of the river. You've got strong manufacturing, you have a strong banking. So the CSRA, we are in a really nice uh, position as an overall community to really grow and move forward in the future. And we all ought to be really excited about that opportunity. So let me kind of highlight a few things that are happening in North Augusta, what I call the, the different quarters. I always start with exit five. And how, I don't know if y'all have ever read a book by Jim Collins called Good to Great. But in that book, Jim uses an analogy about the flywheel. And he says, is, as you start pushing that giant flywheel, you don't know if it's the 50th push or the 150th push, but at some point that flywheel starts working on its own. It doesn't matter what, you don't have to do anything anymore. In North Augusta for us, I say, I think our exit five is like that. That flywheel has been pushed for so many years. We're just continuing to see a lot of things. And let me do, okay, thank you. Did I do that myself? Thank you very much, thank you. I don't have many slides, quite frankly. I just figured you look at something besides hearing me the whole time. So there's not, you're not gonna get a lot from the slides, I promise, but they're just there to look at. So where the real, you know, um, Aiken Regional just is building a standalone uh, emergency room facility on exit five. But what's happening on the, uh, I would say the East 520 piece, there's a big track of land called the Blanchard Track. Uh, Aiken County School District has already, we've already approved them to build a, a, a Highland Springs Elementary and Middle School, okay? That track of land is gonna be really good for folks because not only are you close to I-20, but our fire station three is right there at that, near that intersection. So exit five and that 520 East corridor uh, is continuing to get going and we continue to see really good opportunities there. So I feel good about that. Exit one, I would tell you that's probably gonna be the next shoot a drop. The city uh, used some arts money, the Augusta Regional Transportation Committee money, and we did a Marktown Road study recently. And there, if you, right now it's a mess. <laughs> if you try to get off exit one, you see a lot of traffic as they're trying to widen the road and put some, light, some uh, lights there. But there's a big track of land called the Hamrick's Farm, which is on that wall, uh, Waffle House side, okay? That's gonna open up a lot of residential commercial opportunities for folks. So exit one, I think is gonna be the next shoe to drop and we're, we're seeing a uh, discussion about that. So I think exit one is gonna be a, a great opportunity for future growth. Now, if we went to the other side of North Augusta, what I call the east side, as you know, from Augusta, we call that Gordon Highway on 25, but when you come into South Carolina, we call that Jefferson Davis Highway. So that is the side where the city of North Augusta has their industrial park. And there's still a good bit of land left. Uh, thank you, X1. Uh, see, I told you there's not a whole lot to learn from the slide. Um, so on the east side, that industrial park, as a city, what we've got to have the conversation is, do we want, there's a lot of land around that industrial park, if you've been up there. You know, we've got to decide as a city, is that something we want to drive? Do we want to look at expanding industrial park? Do we need to let that happen privately? Uh, you know, there was a big uh, car dealership up there on the hill that kind of fell through uh, during COVID. Uh, so there's a lot, of, a lot of things happening, people talking. So I think there's some other, there are also some pieces of tracts of land on Martintown Road. So East Martintown Quarter, that road there, that section North Augusta, there's real potential there down the road. So that's exciting. The piece that everybody gets asked about the most that's in the news is Riverside Village. What I would tell you about Riverside Village is post COVID, things are doing very well. I, I don't know who I, I mentioned Lowell, I'll tell you the green jackets are having great season right now. Uh, as far as attendance, they're doing the 4th of July weekend. I think they had the two largest attendance nights I've ever had. So we're seeing people coming back to the ball field, which is good. Uh, we, uh, I know that the Crown Plaza Hotel, they're beginning to increase their bookings again. So that's very positive. We've got two restaurants that are driving folks uh, to hang out at, which I think is positive. 
And we were really excited about the young couple that, had, that owns the Swank uh, franchise. They have opened, not franchise, the business. They have, we went to a ribbon cutting last week. So we finally have a retail space in SRP Park. And we, so it's critical for the future of that development that we rent out that retail space and to have Swank there, I think fits very well. What council has done, I think to help with that process is we passed a noise ordinance for Riverside Village. And what we just said was we wanted to allow on Friday and Saturday nights, we wanted the music to stay, be able to play till 1130. Now that sounds not like a big deal for Augusta, but for North Augusta, when you've been operating on an ordinance that was passed in 1956, trust me, it's a big deal. So what, what this noise ordinance is allowing, it's gonna allow the businesses currently down there on Friday and Saturday nights, they're gonna be able to have music till 1130. It's also exempts to green jackets from the noise ordinance when there's weather delays and they don't finish by 1030, it's gonna give them that flexibility. So we think that's gonna be positive for the current businesses, but I think it will be helpful for us in attracting cafes and restaurants and, and, and businesses that want to have music. Um, we also, the city, prior, admitted, prior mayor Bob Pettit worked hard on the new amphitheater, uh, amphitheater that's down there now. So we started having concerts there. So Riverside Village is, I would tell you, is coming alive and things are happening. Now, the good news everyone needs to understand is all of the taxes and the fees on Riverside Village have been paid, okay? They are current. Now, what you've been reading in the paper has to do with a bank and the developer between those parties. So all I would tell you about that is that is not something we are directly involved in. It's important as you can imagine to us and we are hopeful the judge, if you may or may not know, the judge on July the 6th at the auction uh, gave those parties 30 more days to work out an agreement. So we're very hopeful and positive that will happen. But Riverside Village is a live, work, and play development, and we've got to be thinking and taking action for a live, work, and play development. It's very unique. So very excited about the future of Riverside Village. Now, the piece that I am probably most passionate about, except for communication, which was one of the biggest parts of my platform when I ran for mayor, the most important thing for me is our downtown we have got to revitalize it. We have the bones in place, but we have no meat on it like it needs to be. As I travel around South Carolina, I can do the same thing in Georgia, it doesn't matter. Think about the downtowns, the communities that you visit, and think about their downtowns. All of the great downtowns, you know what you feel like? You feel like it's the heartbeat of that community, okay? It's a destination where citizens actually wanna go hang out. We don't want to just have someone drive down to Antonio's, eat pizza, get in a car and turn back. We want folks to come over downtown, shop, walk around, sit in the green space, enjoy that downtown. So it's critically important for North Augusta that we revitalize our downtown. And we've got council behind that. We got the administration behind that. So how are we going to do that? Well, we took, we're in the process of doing a memorandum of understanding with a group called Main Street. I think Main Street's been part of Augusta in the past. I'm not sure if they're active now, but the Main Street organization is a program nationally that actually helps communities revitalize their downtown. So we're in a process of putting together a memorandum of understanding with them. And that's important because as much as I can talk about great things about North Augusta, we do not have a trash can. We don't have a park bench in our downtown. <laughs> we don't have a bike rack, okay? So things like amenities are really important, okay? So we are now committed to revitalizing the downtown, doing the things we need to do. The other thing we are focused on besides the main street is I'm a big proponent of our Greenway. How many people have ever been on the Greenway here in North Augusta? Okay. It is a great, I would tell you, it is our greatest recreational asset is the Greenway but we have never had a conversation in how to turn a recreational asset that we have people from Waynesburg, from Grovetown, it doesn't matter from the city, they come to ride our Greenway, but we have never thought about turning into an economic catalyst, okay? We have to do that. And the way we're gonna do that is we are gonna connect that Greenway into our downtown. 
Has anybody ever been to a community called Trowden's Rest up in near Greenville by chance? Okay, if you hadn't had a chance, just Google Trowden's Rest. What Trowden's Rest did is it's a town of 5,000 people. It's a way to go to, on a way to go to Thurman. And it's just like George Avenue, it's got four lanes. It is a thoroughfare. But when Greenville County developed the Swamp Rabbit Trail, which would be the closest thing to our Greenway, it's a lot longer. What Travels Rest did is they said, let's bring, let's connect the Swamp Rabbit Trail into our alley systems behind our downtown businesses. And what is happening now is those businesses are flourishing. There's breweries, there's bike shops, there's restaurants. It's a place that people are hanging out. That is a template we can use here in North Augusta. There are other communities doing it. I'm just using Travelers Rest because I visited there and I've met with the mayor. Um, but those are some things that are very important to help, help us revitalize. The other thing that I'm a big proponent in the word is collaboration. One of the frustrations of why I ran for mayor, quite frankly, was I felt like as a city, we were not collaborating with people. Augusta is no different than us. Y'all have, we have great we have people who have talent, we have people who have skills, we have people who love this community, but we have got to ask them, we have got to enlist their help, we have got to collaborate with them, we have to put these folks together, generate synergy, and help, let people help this community move forward. And we're beginning to have those conversations with the Chamber of Commerce, like I said, we're doing it with the Main Street program, we're doing it with the Arts and Heritage Center, and then for the first time we have a Merchants Alliance. Okay, 30 businesses who formed in downtown. And, and I'll just give a plug. If you're not doing anything this Thursday, we have something called Third Thursday, kind of like Augusta's First Friday. Okay, the idea with Third Thursday, that this Third Thursday one's gonna be really cool, is it's gonna be an art wall. So every merchant, we have probably 30 merchants participating. Every merchant will have either an artist, a musician, or a potter at their location. So if Around five to eight o'clock, come on over, get some pizza, get some food, have some wine, visit some different businesses and walk George Avenue. We're getting really, we're gonna have our trolley running, so it's gonna be a great atmosphere. But those are the kinds of things we've got to start doing on a regular basis, and we can do that. Um, so that's the downtown piece. Last thing I will tell you is quality of life. You know, everyone talks about quality of life, right? No matter who you talk to, we all talk about quality of life. Let me kind of share with you what I think quality of life means to me as far as how it looks like in North Augusta. I think there's three things, basically, the towns that I look at that have great quality of life, these are some of the components they have. One is they have safety. People feel safe, okay? I think we check the box, you know, and we're putting our money where our mouth is. We're building a new fire station. We're about to build a new police station and municipal court together. So we're putting our money where our mouth is. Safety is important to us, and I believe that checks the box. Education slash recreation. Uh, Aiken County, it has a solid education um, system here in, in this area. I'll tell you one of the things that we all got to start looking at is the STEM program. That's science and technology with cyber, what's happening with Fort Gordon. Uh, we've got to start implementing some type of STEM curriculum in our schools. Uh, we already begin to talk about doing that, so that's going to be important. Our recreation, I think, is top notch. We've got 20 parks in North Augusta. People love green space, and you add the greenway to it. I think that component of recreation is important. But the third part, in my opinion, that still is lacking is our downtown. We don't have that destination, that place where you want to hang out, a place where you want to, when you tell your friends, meet me, where do you tell them to meet you, okay? We need to have that place and we can do that and we're gonna make that happen in North Augusta. So I think we're, we've got the potential to have some really great quality of life and this can be an amazing community. So that's why I'm pretty excited when I tell people North Augusta, our future is bright, I really believe it. Uh, and I think that's something we can handle. So look at this, let me check my timer. Oh, I've done really good. So it hadn't gone off. So with that, if you happen to have any questions, uh, I'd be glad to answer anything. If not, you can get with me afterwards. Uh, yes, sir. Yeah, uh, thank you. Thank you. Um, well, now you're talking about the actual lock and dam, right? So here's what I'll tell you. Um, North Augusta has, uh, is an advocate for the lock and dam. 
I will tell you this. Y'all remember Brack back, Cam? Y'all remember 15, 20 years ago when we tried to save Fort Gordon? Excluding what's happening right now with the lock and dam, that was the first time, that's the only other time that I thought both sides of the river came together. Grassroots from legislators and all the way down to chambers. But as far as North Augusta, we are a proponent of the lock and dam as well as I believe Augusta is. The situation right now, it's in, it's in mediation, okay? So the Georgia attorneys, the South Carolina attorneys, they are in mediation right now and we are hopeful and the problem with mediation, as you know, with attorneys, <laughs> uh, most stuff is private. So we don't have all that in information, but I do know that the consortium that we're working with in Augusta side and North Augusta and Aiken County, all of us, um, uh, we are working toward that, but that is currently in mediation, sir. Okay. So that's where I think it's driving, not on the legislative side right now, but on the mediation side, the legal side. Okay, great question. Yes, sir. Yep. Not the third, you're talking about the fifth or the 13th? Okay. Yeah, I, I will tell you um, <clears throat> that is, huh, that was for my part, not for the question. Uh, the fifth three, that is a, that's something that I think our previous administration, quite frankly, did not really have much involvement in. I don't, I don't know how much uh, communication Augusta had with us on that. I'm not saying they didn't, it's just before my time. Um, I would tell you that uh, we could debate that on a lot of, a lot of sides about the fifth street. The part that I would tell you that we're probably more excited about and where we are trying to put our money where our mouth is again is a 13th Street Bridge. And y'all all have seen Georgia DOT. Augusta has quite frankly done a much better job than us. I believe, uh, you know, the DOT bridge is gonna be basic Georgia DOT. The key is what Augusta is gonna do to connect it to, I guess it's Bartram Trail, is that right? And we wanna connect to the Greenway. And I think Augusta has uh, probably done a better job. I know they have as far as getting a lot of their funding mechanisms in place for that. We're aware of that uh, and we're working on that piece on our side because it's for us, we wanna connect it to our Greenway. So the 13th Street Bridge, as far as where we are in North Gus, I would say we're probably more focused on that piece right now because I, I think prior administration, we really had no connection with Augusta on the 5th Street piece. It is, it is. And, um, and I'm, I'm well about, you know, working on both sides, but I'm just saying that's kind of where we are now. That's a great question. Anybody else? Yes, Cam. Thank you. Okay. Right. Okay. Okay. I thought about it. Okay. Yeah. I, I, I have not, I have not, I like that. I agree with that. I agree. Okay. Thank you. Now, see, that's a perfect example. See, thank you for that. That's what we're going to do with a public power hour. So if Cam lived in North Augusta, he could come to the public power hour on Monday night and tell us that. So anyway, thank you. That's exactly what I'm talking about. And that's why we're try I'm trying to get out and talk to folks to learn. So yes, thank you for that. I'll look into that. That's a good point. What else? Yes, sir. Maintain, uh, I think that's a challenge for the city, so I think it's a challenge for Augusta. What, what is your secret sauce to keeping all your stuff located? Well, <laughs> that's a good question. Well, it depends on who you ask would agree with you or not, okay? Um, yes, I believe the city has done a good job, but it's, it's interesting if you travel around South Carolina in general, almost every city, there's roads, quarters that come in that just are, don't, are not taken care of. I think back when Lark Jones was mayor, I do believe one of the things the city has done is they took all of their uh, lawn maintenance service in-house. 
and uh, has grown that. And I think that is one thing that's allowed us to control that narrative a lot better, quite frankly, okay? Increases your budget, but you know, if, if, if the look is important to you. So that's important. The city has done a really good job of using, we have a one cent local option sales tax over here in North Augusta or in Aiken County. And we're in, I guess, sales tax four right now. So uh, we have been able to put money in that and designate a particular area for that. So I think that's also been helpful. That's a great question. Thank you for that compliment. Yes, sir. I think it's an issue. I mean, be realistic. You know, I will tell you, talking about a lot of people don't realize, I don't know how George is, but most, probably 95% of the roads in North Augusta are owned by South Carolina DOT. I guess that may be common in other states. I don't know. So Martintown Road is a DOT road, okay? Uh, I do think we're fortunate that we do have those wide roads, you know, Georgia Avenue. Um, you know, I think one of the things the city did with Knox Avenue when they, where Lowe's is and the Walmart, I know for a fact, Charles Martin, who was a city administrator then, if you notice, there's only about two lights on that road, okay? And what they did want to have happen is what happened in Aiken. So if you ever go to Whiskey Road in Aiken, okay? But Christmas, quite frankly, it, 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 it turns all the way around, it's crazy. So. I'm not an expert on that. We've got smarter people that understand it. I do think how you control your lighting, lights is important. We've shown that we can do it with Knox Avenue, uh, but, and I don't have that answer for you, but it is gonna be an issue that we're gonna to have to begin to start addressing. But I do think we put money into the Marktown Road. So let me tell you about Marktown Road. What we're looking at doing, and again, the planning commission approved this in the previous council about two months before I took office, uh, we, of course, we haven't funded anything yet, but part of what we're going to do on Marktown Road is we're looking at using a couple roundabouts, okay? So talking about what Cameron's talking about when you're coming in, I know you're talking about past us, but as you're coming in there, uh, roundabouts are another way, and they can be done very well. I'm not talking about necessarily some of the ones in Hilton Head that are a boondoggle, but there are, there are ways they're doing roundabouts now in a lot of communities in North Carolina. So we're talking about using a couple of roundabouts on Marktown Road. So that's an, that's an example. That's about all, I, that's a, the most I can tell you about that part of it. It's a great question. Okay, awesome. Thank you all, this is good. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. You may regret telling me about that Monday meeting. I might be showing up with some ideas. Um, it's, <laughs> it's good to have you. And we do want to, as a club, thank you and the city for um, allowing us to use this space and for giving us a very generous um, rate on it. We really appreciate it allowing us to come back. We are, you are charging us, yes. But, um, but they've been very, They've been very. It's all about regional love. Yeah, they've been very accommodating, and we do um, greatly appreciate that. Uh, we want to again welcome our guest, um, and we're excited, uh, Rick, to have you um, officially join the club. If any of our guests are interested in joining the club, be sure to talk to um, Derek, our um, vice president, um, about that. And again, we want to sincerely congratulate Benjamin on winning the first annual Sam Tyson uh, Scholarship Award. We're very proud of you and wish you all the best um, at the University of Georgia. Although I'm not sure Sam, as a Georgia Tech fan, or Georgia Tech fan, he would be, he would be very supportive of you, but I feel, like I, I feel like he's telling me I need to say, you know, Georgia Tech. So anyway, congratulations again, and thank you all for joining us. Um, I want to leave you with a few um, quotes about, remember, National Simplicity Day. I'm not going to attempt a joke today. The last one failed really badly. So um, we're going to go with um, two thoughts about simplicity. Um, the first one is enjoy the little things for one day you may look back and realize they were the big things. And then it is the heart that makes a man rich. He is rich according to what he is, not according to what he has. Everyone have um, a great week. We will meet again on July 26th. 
Our speaker will be Tom um, Benlinger, the vice president of the Green Jackets. So we're going to learn all about everything they have going on beyond um, just the baseball um, team and the other sort of programming they have down at um, Riverside Park. So everyone have a great week. And I would ring my bell, but I don't have a bell. So ding, ding. We stand adjourned.